Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,534. Persistence. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and a welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm very revved up today and excited to share with you a very special guest calling in from uh, Gardena, California, where uh, I think it's supposed to be sunny, but you're in for some rain coming up here, Jeff Thisted. Jeff Thisted has worked in the car industry for decades. He was part of Auto Trader, Auto Tracer, I should say, dot com and Wheels TV. He's hosted on stage at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit the Chicago Auto Show in New York, International Auto Show, and many others across America. He's been the live events host on the Hot Rod Power Tour, Car Craft Summer Nationals, and the F-Body Nationals, and the C-10 Nationals, to name just a few. He holds an SCCA racing license and is a member of the Motor Press Guild. You'll find his adventures and exploits in the 55 Chevy at iDrive55 or iDriveA55.com. His past includes working on The Price is Right with Bob Barker. How's that? And he was the only male host of GSN's Playmania Block of Programming. There you go. Where he hosted both Quiz Nation and 100 Winners. We'll be back in a minute to talk to Jeff. But first, we're going to insert a couple ad spots here that keep food on my table. We'll be right back. Hey, Cars Yeah! I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy-on, easy-off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors, and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you a Cars Yeah subscriber? If you're not, go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send you my free filler up book. It's a very cool book I created of fuel filler fun, some very cool imagery, and great quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get my weekly email follow-up and my weekly blog. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send it to you right away. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Jeff, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am ready to rock, Mark. I got my (laughs) e-ticket and uh, let's roll, baby. Oh, yeah. Well, you're such a fun guy. And I, you know, I had Mike Lanier Lanier on the show. Uh, I know you do some work with him. And I was on a little uh, video webinar thing you guys did uh, a couple of weeks ago. I have that posted up on my website, which was really fun. And that's how I got to know a lot about you. And I went, you know, I got to get this guy on the show. But before I jump into some of my questions, what's one thing? That most people don't know about you, Jeff. Oh, we're good. <laughs> Got to question. give away a, I, gotta give uh, away a secret most here. Most people know about the Price Is Right and about my car stuff. And by the way, thanks for the uh, that that bio, man. You make me sound good. Holy Toledo! Well, you you are good. That's what uh, I've heard. So, <laughs> um, I know for a lot of people, but uh, it's a just between you and me and uh, okay. those who are nobody's, watching. Nobody's I, listening. I used to work at the <laughs> at the Playboy Mansion for uh, for a few years too. So, no that, kidding. Yeah, oh, that was kind of okay. kind of cool. And I'm I'm actually very proud of one of the facts. I had a motorcycle accident, so I was in the hospital for a bit. And uh, my mom and dad come out to visit from Colorado during that time. And my dad had I grew up with. They were always around the house, the Playboy magazines. And my dad knew that I worked up there. And there's art up at the mansion. And I had Mrs. Hefner take my mom and dad. My mom wasn't going to go. She's not. Out. She said, "I'm not going to that place." And I'm like, "Mom, if you're not going, Pop's not going." And 
I know I can die. Am I, if I get my pop into the mansion, then I've done my job as a good son, and I got my pop <laughs> into the mansion. So I, I'm very proud of that. Yeah, no doubt. I'll tell you something funny, Jeff. I got invited to a party at the Playboy Mansion. This was back in the 80s. And uh, Rob Report Magazine, you know, the, remember the Rob Report, they were doing their 10th annual party there. And so I come home to my wife and I said, hey, I got invited to a, a party at the Playboy Mansion. And she goes, yeah, right. And I said, do you mind if I go? And she's like, if you got invited to the Playboy Mansion, you just go ahead and go. There's no way. How did you, what? And I hold up the card and I go, I got invited. And she, her eyes got real big. Oh, and she's like, yeah, she's like, well, can I go with you? And I go, well, if you want to. And she goes, no, no, you go with one of your buddies. This will be a story you can tell forever. Well, this was the 80s, so I'm still telling the story, right? And uh, it was actually really fun. Uh, they had all these tents set up, and they had all these cars, and then Playboy Playmates standing next to each car. And then you could get your picture, of course, taken. And this was back when Hugh Hefner was married. So I had to laugh because on the one of the tennis courts there, were all these pedal cars and kids' toys and all this. And then you might, you'll know this better than me. There was this one little house thing. It was like a little cabana that you went in. It was all, the whole floor was carpeted. And the game probably room. A pl- the game room, yeah. yeah. And I remember going back there and it was full of kids' toys. And I'm like, this kind of destroys the whole fantasy. Of- well, during that time, <laughs> I was up there when he was married as well, before and after. Um, did you go up the, the front driveway to the house? Yeah, we the went mansion? up the front driveway. We so were back, in the whole front, so and we got to then, go into the mansion when you, as well. When you go up to the front door and you talk to the talking rock at the at security, <laughs> the and once the rock. talking rock opens up the gate, right in front, right there, is that square sign: "Caution, children at play." Yeah. So that that was your first <laughs> clue that he's married and that and that they and, the, and and the kids are up there. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It you, was. Did you get into the house at all? Yeah, we got to go into the house. We couldn't go upstairs. That yeah. was blocked off. But, but I mean, we could go in the house. The house yeah, the ki- is yeah, uh, it's crazy. amazing. The staircase, the woodwork, it is. It's the original house from Holmby Hills. It's, I think, almost seven or eight acres. It's got the largest redwood forest in Southern California. It's it's quite a masterpiece. Yeah, it's insane. And, of course, the pool, the famous grotto, yeah. um, you know, yeah. the, the the peacocks and animals that are back there in all the cages. Yeah. It, it was a really interesting evening and actually pretty fun. They had some very cool cars there and some very beautiful young women as well. So, so years and years ago, it's pouring down rain one night, pouring down. And one of the girls up there, Lisa, Lisa and I are out walking. We've got Martian and Cooper, the two kids, and they were kids at the time. Now I think Martian has grown up and he's, I don't know, CEO of the company, but anyway, they were kids at the time. We're walking out in the Redwood Forest. It's, it's pouring down rain. And Lisa says to them, Hey kids, well, what are you going to do if a uh, if a lion or a tiger jumps out? And without hesitation, they said, "We'll call security. Security will come and protect us." <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, talk about living in a gilded <laughs> cage or living in a sheltered environment. Security will come and save us from a lion and tiger. Yeah, good luck with that, kid. Yeah, security is <laughs> always here. Well, there's a little secret now you know about Jeff, and I don't think I've ever said that on Cars. Yeah, so there's another little secret you've learned about Mark Green. So very cool. <laughs> Well, listen, let's start on this journey of your life, Jeff, with a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that has great meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the wheels smoking here on cars. Yeah. So take the wheel. Uh, my, I think it was after college. I worked at a, I went to Colorado State University and I worked at a radio, a couple of radio stations up there. And then when I got done with college, I moved back to Colorado Springs and I worked at a rock and roll station there. And I, I, I think that's where I got this quote, but my, you put it on your, on your pre sheet and I can't believe I've had this thing. Sitting around in my house for not decades, but a long, long time. Persistence. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Calvin Coolidge, and it's like, persistence alone is omnipotent and it's like i and yeah my dad years ago said you're the most persistent person i know it's like i yeah so thanks pop and persistence that's persistence you know it's my dad gave me the same thing i had that same thing it's not nicely framed like yours but it was in a card that he gave me years ago and you know i have to say you don't get to 1534 interviews with people without being persistent i mean you're super persistent so give me an example of how you have used that in what you do in your career if I don't, I'm uh, persistent. Like you said, you're, you're, you've got a little anal retentiveness in there. Yeah, I'm, just I'm a, a bit. I'm a networker. I like 
talking to people and, and hearing back from people. So if I'll touch base with somebody a- about something. And if I don't hear back from them, then I'll start emailing them once a month. If I don't hear back from them for, after a while, it becomes once a week, then once a day, then once an hour. And until I get a, a response back, I'm persistent or uh, maybe called a jerk. I'm not sure which, but. No, there's, there's, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, the great Denise McCluggage, who is a, a great rider, race car driver. She was way ahead of her time racing in the 50s and 60s. I was so fortunate to meet her at Pebble Beach. I was up on the judging stand, got to sit next to her. On the other side of me was Jackie Stewart. I'm like, how did sir, I get here? Sir, Jackie Stewart. Sir, yeah, now it's sir, yeah. Uh, and so um, I tried to get Denise on my show for a couple of years, and I sent her many emails. And finally, one day, I get this phone call from Denise McCluggage. She goes, hello, Mark, this is Denise. She goes, I'm very, I'm very um, uh, embarrassed that I've not responded to you. She said, you're the most persistent gentleman. And she said, let me say politely persistent that I've ever met. And she said, so I would like to do a show with you. I've been very ill. And sadly, three months after we did her show, she passed away because she was she was ill. And she, in essence, she was dying at the time. Um, but I always held those words really true because you said pesky, but you can be politely persistent, right? Yeah, 100%. There's a, there's a way to do it. Yeah. And- I, talking to a friend of mine yesterday, I said something like that. And he's like, hey, brother, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease. Like, aha, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. If you think about for listeners out there, here's a golden nugget that Jeff has, has dropped us. If you try to get a contact with somebody, try to sell something to somebody, whatever, and you've only tried two or three times, you know, you can't give up. Um, there's a way to do it politely. I think back to the days when I was working and people were soliciting me for advertising. Uh, vendors wanted to sell me things. I mean, I was getting calls every day. And it's those folks that did it politely, but persistently. They never gave up. And even if you get a no, that's just a postponement for later is the way I learned. Exactly. A hundred percent. And if yeah. you, and as I, I know a lot of people email now, uh, emails are one thing, be nice in the email. But when you, uh, uh, and I learned this back from the radio days, if you're talking to somebody on the phone, always smile because a smile translates through the phone and always be nice because I, I worked at this place and there was this producer who would call up people and berate their assistants. Hey, it's so-and-so calling. I need to talk to you. And he wouldn't get through. But another friend of mine where I got this from, and I, yeah, JD is one of my most successful friends in, in all the world. And that's where I got Buddy from. Hey, Buddy. It's, it's, and he would call up the assistants and, uh, oh, JD, how are you? And he would talk to the assistants for a few minutes and then just automatically, oh, I bet you want to talk to so-and-so. Here, let, me, let me put you through. He's not taking, I'll, I'll get you right through. It's like, Always be nice, especially to the assistants, because they can either open the door or slam it in your face. So always well, be nice, I'll, no matter who they are. I'll tell you what, and you never know who they are. Back in the old, old days, I'm aging myself. I used to be an account executive at an ad agency. I was also a creative director. And in those days, you had to go downtown, go into high rises, look on the little board and figure what companies could use my services, go up in an elevator uh, uh, uh. and try to get past the receptionist, Reception, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, a guy that taught me, kind of one of my mentors said, be super nice to the receptionist, the assistants. They'll get you through the doors. So I would always bring flowers or donuts or something every time I kept going back. Well, one time I finally got in. It was a Coal Bank, big company. We were doing a lot of real estate work. And uh, I sat down with the guy and he said, first and foremost, Mark, he said, I want to thank you. He said, you've been so kind to my daughter. And I said, who's your daughter? And he said, She's our receptionist. Now, imagine if I'd been mean to her. I'd never gotten through the door. I didn't know. They, different last names. If you yeah. had been mean to her and gotten through the door, then he would have let you have it, and your conversation oh. would have been kaput right there. Yeah, if he'd wasted any time on me, for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's, let's move forward and talk about what you do. I want you to explain to people, because as I read through your bio, here's a guy that's in, in, been involved and is involved with a lot of things in the automotive industry. And when I met you in that webinar we did, that po- I mean, I looked at you and I That's went, okay, fun. here's a guy that is so fun, always got a smile on his face, always active in the car industry. You drive this cool 55. So <laughs> tell everybody listening about, yeah, there you go, who Jeff is, what you do, what your life is about. And I know right now everything that a lot of stuff you do and I do has been shut down, events and all that. Yeah, we'll get past this. I'm positive. But tell people about Jeff. Uh, I, I'm Jeff Thisted. I like cars, game shows, and uh, my, my old dog, Cisco, who used to be around. Uh, basically, if it makes noise or has exhaust, I like it. I grew up in Colorado Springs, 
And I think, I mean, the, the, the event that, that sticks out to me is, uh, my parents had a 71 VW Super Beetle. And in the very backpack, they've got that little itty bitty seat that I would always ride in. And oh, behind the, the back seat? Exactly. That, yeah. That little, that little compartment. That's it. So yeah. that, that was my spot. So I'm hanging out back there and we were driving around the Garden of the Gods one day in Colorado Springs. And all of a sudden coming the other way was this Corvette Club and the Plastic Fantastic. This was back in the 70s. And I think it was in the third or fourth grade. And it, they just scarred my mind. And from then, the Corvette was my favorite car. And then I got a subscription to Hot Rod Magazine. I've had a subscription to Hot Rod Magazine ever since. And now uh, it's like I'm one of the hosts of the Hot Rod Power Tour, uh, which is uh, it's a dream come true. Uh, I host yeah, the Midwest Dregs, Car Crash Summer Nationals, the good guys. But like I think half the good guys shows across the country. So it's uh, it's fantastic. It's <laughs> and I get paid for it. So it's just it's it's uh, it. Well, what, what is the quote? If you find something that you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. And uh, I, I I can't believe I get paid for this. It's a don't tell anybody. I do it for free. Um, <laughs> there's and I just saw it came out yesterday. The Good Guys has a new magazine or their magazine has been out for a long time. The Good Guys Gazette, but it's now uh, in stores yeah. uh, like 7-Eleven and Walmart and that kind of stuff. And the magazine came out yesterday and a buddy of mine posted the picture on Facebook uh, and it's got CSX 3170, which is a, a it's a Cobra, a yeah, Shelby yeah, Cobra, yeah, yeah. not a kit car, not a, a recreation, real, not real a deal. tribute car. The, and as the legend goes, the only big block Cobra still owned by the original owner, Bruce Camburn. And the oh car went into, yeah, as soon as he got, he got it from Carol himself at the, at, at the LAX, at his LAX shop. And then um, he ra- autocrossed it for years, put it away, autocrossed it for more years, put it away, and then brought it back out a couple of years ago to compete at an optimum. And for the past two years in a row, um, the car, and Bruce isn't driving it, Scott Frazier's a driver. So you've seen, or I've seen, exponentially more kit cars, tribute cars of these Cobras than, than real ones. And every time this thing comes out, it's history in the making. It's a, who cares about what, what it's worth? It's a historic automobile. It's a real Shelby Cobra. And the thing gets beaten to within an inch of its life on the autocross track. Oh, it's, it's got dry sump lubrication. It's got a Bosch anti-lock braking system, data acquisition. It's a full on 10 tenths race car and it's full of history. And just to hear it and, and feel it reverberating in your chest is, uh, yeah. it, it makes you proud to be an American. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is, that is cool. Well, you definitely, <laughs> you fit the, the, category here of a guy who's figured out how to wrap his passion for cars into his life and inspire others through that. So you're the perfect guest here on Cars. Yeah, let's <laughs> talk. Let's kind of go back in time a little bit, though, and talk about a big challenge or even a big failure. And I bring this up not to dwell up anything negative in the past. It's more so you can share that with people so that they can learn what was the lesson there and how you took that lesson forward in a positive way. So take us on a little trip. Uh, a negative that happened, I was, you had mentioned the Chicago, New York, Detroit auto show. Now, we, we were talking about car shows earlier. Now, these are auto shows, the Detroit International Auto Show, the, the, the Super Bowl, New York International Auto Show. I was the idiot up on stage doing the, the, the trucks, the Silverados and the Colorados. So Chevrolet thought I was the guy that uh, who, who uh, looked like he worked hard but played harder. Um, they, wouldn't let, they only had girls on all the performance cars, so they wouldn't let me on the Corvette or the Camaro. Uh, yet I was the only person on the Chevy team who knew how an internal combustion engine works and a limited slip differential uh, during training every year. How many people here drive Chevys? It was me and two other people who would raise their hands. And theirs were always, you know, within the, the last five years. Mine is the oldest exponentially. So I'm the only one who drew, drove a hot rod, knew anything about cars. Uh, a negative, uh, I was at the it was at the Texas Auto Show in Dallas. And I uh, love Dallas, all the food there, the people. It's wonderful. And as uh, some woman thought that I rolled my eyes at her husband. It was just when the uh, the ZL1 Camaros came out, the new uh, uh, six, yeah, six gen Camaro came out and he's trying to open up the hood and I'm, hey buddy, you need any help? No, huh? She thought that I rolled my eyes at her husband, wrote a scathing email and I got fired. Fired for allegedly rolling my eyes at somebody. And then I showed up on the power tour. All the, so all the other car events that I went to, Chev- Chevrolet Performance, I drive a Chevy. I see I'm, the hat there. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a Chevy yeah. guy. I, um, yeah. All my Chevrolet GM Performance friends are like, uh, come here. Uh, did, I, I need to talk to you. Did, uh, I, I, I heard this rumor about this and this. Did, <laughs> did this, you roll your oh, eyes at true. somebody? <laughs> get the get out of the way. It's like, I, I'm not making anything up. I'm just here telling you how it is. So. It was good fun because we stood around and I got to talk about 
cars all day, which isn't bad, but we had these supervisors who you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, 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 that. and basically you're just watching, you're, you're watching your clock. Is it five o'clock? What time is my break? What time is this? I'm just ready to get out of here because these, and all these idiots come up to you with your, oh, who do you, who do you drive? And, and since I'm the only one on the team with a car, my, my, I, my screensaver on my iPhone is a picture of, of my car. There you go. So it's, yeah, 55. You want, yep. Yeah, if you're trying to talk and you want some credibility, you've come to the wrong person because I drive a cooler car than you and I drive it. The people in, in Detroit, uh, they hated me the most because it's like Detroit may very well, in fact, be the motor city. But Detroit is not the car capital of the world. Southern California is. And I would say Southern California's a car capital. Well, we're the, you may be the motor city, friend, but where's your hot rod right now? Well, exactly. Your hot rod is in the garage. And why? Because the weather in Detroit sucks. Southern California is the only place on the planet you can drive an open fendered roadster for 360 days a year. It's right. it's a car yeah. cap of the world. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this. What was the lesson learned from that? Because a lot of people lose their jobs for reasons that they have no idea. I mean, look at what's going on right now. There's thousands of people losing their job for no fault of their own. So yeah. how, how did you take that experience forward and turn it into something more positive? Oh, I was bitter about it for a long time. It's like, there's nothing I can do about it. So just move on. And I had been told by other team Chevy members that, dude, you're wasting your time here. You're too big for this stuff. But it was, it was a comfortable gig. Um, it was yeah. super easy to talk about cars all day and the newest, yeah. latest, and greatest. It's like I know. a dream come true job. Yeah. To an extent, with it, it would have been a dream come true if it wasn't for all of it. It was production plus. All these production plus little supervisors. This yeah. woman would, oh my, she was the worst. Just nitpick. <laughs> oh, it was just horrible. So it was a blessing in disguise that I got yeah. out of there because yeah. now there's no one there to say you can't. Do, 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 do. It's it's yeah. basically they wind me up in the morning, give me and a microphone, you, <laughs> and give me a go. shove. And it's like, get out there and go. So yeah. It's, it's now I kind of have carte blanche. I do what I want to do. And it's 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 so much fun. Um, and it's like, yeah, I love what I'm doing. Well, you know, sometimes we need that push out of the nest. You know, 100%. if things are getting a little bit too comfortable, yeah. um, that's a warning sign. And for those listeners out there, if you're feeling too comfortable in your role, there's something wrong there. You You need to be pushed. You need to be challenged a little bit more. Don't let comfortable stick in you because it's the kiss of death as you experience there. We're going to take a short break and thank some sponsors here, and we will be right back. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts? Around the globe, I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover 
and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we're back here, Jeff, and I want you to share a story that instigated this passion that you have for cars. You're a lifelong car guy. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you look back that you knew you were going to be a lifelong car guy? The only one I can think of that uh, the, 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 in Colorado Springs at Garden of the Gods with the Corvettes going by me, that's when it started. And then from that, it's just, it's been reading Hot Rod Magazine. And then I saw, uh, when I worked at the radio station in Colorado Springs after college, the radio station would get Auto Week. And I, I didn't know there was any weekly car magazine. I know my dad got a Sports Illustrated and Time Magazine weekly, but so I subscribed to Auto Week and it's not, and now it's, it's called something else. It's not weekly anymore. It's either bi-weekly or monthly. Well, they but, went, uh, Auto Week went to every other week and now Auto Week isn't even printing a magazine anymore. They have an online presence, but the magazine's gone. So, ah, see, cause I, I was still subscribing to it. So we'll have to see if I get it. Well, this is why you haven't been getting it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. They, they quit, they quit mailing it. Yeah. It's, it fell fate to a lot of car magazines these days oh, that have tried yeah. to make this transition to online, which is apparently very challenging. Yeah, I still have my Hot Rod magazine subscription, and I have to—I actually have to call up uh, whoever, whatever, whatever they're called now, uh, Motor Trend. I have to call them up, and because uh, I had a, a CarCraft subscription, when CarCraft just got canceled, so I have to add the CarCraft to my Hot Rod. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of them have gone the, the wayside. I'll tell you one you need to get that's fun is uh, Sports Car Market magazine. Um, oh, really? I, okay. Yeah, I do a second podcast with Keith Martin, who's the publisher of oh, that. It's called Buy, Buy, Sell, Hold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Keith did an article in, in Auto Week. I remember him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And so uh, we do this weekly podcast, Buy, Sell, Hold, that uh, we interview people who work in the industry of collector cars, investing in cars, and things like that, uh, the market. But he also has a second publication, American Car Market, which is about American cars, which you obviously are American car guy. So uh, I'll have to set you up with one of those. I think that'd be a good thing for you oh, to that'd be, be fun. reading. Yeah, absolutely. What was your first really special car? When you look back in time, I know you got your 55, which is like uber cool. And the fact that you drive it and you can drive it down there in Southern California, it makes it even cooler and you cooler, of course. But what was your first really special car that came into your life that you went, man, I finally got this thing. So my, my first car was the, that 71 VW Super Beetle. That was my first car. And growing up in Colorado, it was perfect because VW bugs are killer in the snow. Fantastic. Engines over the rear axle. So you'd have all these four-wheel drives stuck on the hill, and the, my little bug just putter right up the hill. It was fantastic. It was fun, and then uh, I, I shouldn't admit this. I had a uh, My first car that I bought was a Honda Prelude, a 91 Honda Prelude that the girls loved it, so that was all right. But my first real car, I had a motorcycle, and then I had a motorcycle accident, and my mom came out to – to check me out in the hospital and whatnot. And I was telling her, you know, I think I'm thinking about, to, I found this 1970 Chevelle. It's got a small block. It's got the uh, 202 heads on it. So uh, she's like, I, I, I've never heard of you talk about a Chevelle before. Um, you're young. You don't have a wife. You don't have any kids. You don't have any responsibilities right now. All I've heard you talk about forever is a Corvette. So if you want a Corvette, I think now is your time. You should get a Corvette. And it's like, my mom, the voice of reason, what a cool telling mom. me I should get an old Corvette. Wait, seriously? So I looked and looked. And, and at the time, I was bedridden uh, with my ankle above my heart from all the surgeries and whatnot. So I looked and looked online, and I found a, it's a 69 Corvette convertible. And nice. I don't know if you ever saw the uh, the TV show Jag. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that show. Dear, uh, anyways, the car on that, I I had my first. I'm not an actor. I'm a host, but I was a background guy. And I was a stand-in on the show Jag, and they ended up using my car as the star car on the show Jag. I was the transportation coordinator. Uh, I was like, "Yeah, we want it. We want a new car. Forget that old car." And Donald P. Belisarius, I'll never forget this. He was I on. Know, uh, I know the name. Yeah, he Magnum PI, Quantum yeah. Leap, Tequila oh, yeah. Benetti, Airwolf, yeah. these yeah. uh, NCIS. He's huge. Yeah, he showed up. This was at the uh, the not the Paramount lot, the uh, 20th Century Fox lot on Pico. We showed up there, and this is bad. And Auto Week just came out with the article on the new SL 600 Mercedes or 600 SL, whatever it was. The V12 model had just heard about their 120 grand back in the what eight, late 80s, mid 80s, and all. And there's a V12 on the lot. Holy mm. shit! Look at this thing. So <laughs> yeah. and so, I just walked over and started talking to whoever it was there. And it turns out later on, 
that was Donald P. Bellisaro. And he's like, forget that new Corvette. At the end of the day, he pulls up next to me in my car. and He's like, Jeff, is that you? I'm like, yeah, that's me. We want to use that car on the show. Come in tomorrow. We'll sign the papers. And he drove off. Wow. Wait, what? So that was my first hot rodder, my first real car, 69 Corvette convertible, 350 yeah. small block, Muncie M20, four-speed transmission, no cool. AC, no power brakes, no power steerings. It was my little rocket. Yeah. No, what a good, uh, what a mom to have. That's pretty cool. Right? Oh, She's yeah. the best. <laughs> she is the best. Moms she always best. are. That's for sure. Well, here's a little introspective thought for you. I'm going to get in your head a little bit here. If you woke up tomorrow, Jeff, and you were a car, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself manifest as a car, what would Jeff Thisted be? Since I was born in 68, up, uh, okay. I was either going to say a a 68 Camaro is is uh, I was going to quite a compliment for me. I'd probably just say I'm a, I'm a 68 C body, uh, okay, 68, <laughs> a C10 truck with a small block in it. I'm kind of classic. I like old stuff. So I'd say maybe, maybe a 68 C10. But you just keep going. There you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly, always yeah. there. Always there. Always persistent. Very always loyal. Very loyal, can be counted on. Okay, I like that very much. Nice answer. Very cool. All right, we're entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of that Seabody truck. So here we we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? I think one of the the habits, uh, and we spoke about this uh, a little bit beforehand, that's attributed to my success is the persistence. Just always, always following up with people. I don't know if gregarious is the word, but I, I like talking to people. I like networking. I'm not an agent at all, but I, I, I have a huge, I don't know, Rolodex, but a contact list, really good at putting people together. If I hear somebody needs something, it's like, oh, wait, I heard somebody else is looking for the same thing. So I'll put two and two together and, and make an introduction and, uh, uh, networking and, and persistence. A connector. Well, I'll tell my listeners, you know, I am always chasing people. When you do five shows a week, 1,534 shows yeah. in less than six years, you've got to be persistent. And I'll tell you this, a lot of people that I invite, sometimes they come on rather quickly. Sometimes it takes a long time. I have to keep being persistent, right? I'll tell you, Jeff, boom, answered my email right away. Let's set it up next week, buddy. And here we are recording the show. So you walk your talk. I appreciate that. Well, very that's much. one of the things. I don't have a, a I don't have a nine to five job. I don't have a, a, a my sister in law and my little nephew come to Denver Airport to pick me up years ago. And we're driving back. He's in the back seat. Oh, Uncle Jeff, do you have a job? And my sister in law just starts laughing. laughing. And she's like, Not like your dad has a job. Exactly. But he said, when I'm not working, I don't get paid. So it's all I've got an Excel spreadsheet as a calendar and if I don't have things going on, then I feel like my life is a waste. What am I doing? So I've got, you know, at 930, we've got to do this. You invited me on a podcast. Let's get it done. I would love to do this. It's, I mean, it's, it's helping you. It's helping me. I can, you know, promote my stuff, whatever's going on. So let's, it, it's mutually beneficial. Let's, let's get it going. So I try to knock up everything on my, on my Excel spreadsheet every day that I can. And I try to build it up for the next day. So I, I've got stuff to do because yeah. especially now during this time that, this you got to find stuff to do. You got to find things to do. You got to stay busy. Yeah. Well, you, you know, everyone has one of those uncles, quote unquote. You're you're that uncle. <laughs> you're that guy. How about if I could wave a magic wand? Now, you've met a lot of great people with all your connections. But if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Dale Earnhardt. Oh, number three. Yeah. yeah, number three. So let number me ask three. you this. If you could ask Dale one question. Oh, I have, I don't know. No, I'm not, I can't, I can't ask him a question because you say we were going to sit down and have a drink. Yeah. Okay. I want to have a drink with Dale and just, I want to have, have multiple fun. drinks with Dale and yeah. listen to the stories. Cause his, his son has this podcast that someone was saying, Oh, you know, it's not professional. And that's what I love about it. He's these stories that he tells. Yeah. And it's yeah. just, I want to listen to the, like the old time racing stories, man. Those are be- when they had packs of cigarettes up on their dashboard and they wore a seatbelt <laughs> if they wanted to open face. He's the last, the last of the open face helmets. Yeah. I mean, he's a serious badass. It's, yeah. um, if you don't, if you don't let him buy, he will run. Th- Anyways, I, he's, he'll run yeah, through he's, you. Yeah. yeah well, there's your, there's man. your question. You'd sit back, pour a drink and say, Dale, tell me a story. And- <laughs> right. And yeah. three hours later, he'd still be telling you that story. So yeah, there yeah. you go. How about <laughs> automotive advice? What's the best automotive advice someone's given you? Uh, change your oil. Uh, change your yeah. oil. And just my pop was always the guy. He would take his stuff to, to Firestone. And he had Chuck the manager and Sherman the mechanic. And we know those guys. We I, I still remember yeah. their names. It's funny. Um, actually, Sherman bought my old 
VW Bug. But, oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, we we knew them, and Pop would drop off the car, then he'd walk back up the hill home and walk back down to pick up the car. So w- there was a relationship there. So he did. But I just remember uh, somebody telling me never trust. If you have somebody doing something on your car, never don't really not trust them, but always at least look over the work and make sure everything's on the up and up. Because if you, I would take you, uh, I had a, a 2000 something Blazer. And it's like, I'm not changing the oil on that. I'll just take it to Jiffy Loop for 20 bucks. It's cheaper than the oil that if I would have to buy the oil myself. And you hear all these horror stories about them not putting the thing or them not draining it out. So I just sit, just uh, make sure it's draining. Just just watch them and just just make sure that, yeah, dot your T's and cross yeah. your eyes. Well, your dad was a smart guy, just as your mom was a wonderful mom. And that is find a great mechanic and stick with them. Uh, you know, I've got some great mechanics here that work with me. Pete Bristow, who's been on my show. Uh, deals with European cars. And I can always just feel confident that whatever he does for me, he's been a, a guest here on Cars Yeah. Now, how about a resource, a go-to, something that you go to regularly? Could be a blog, a website, a podcast you like, anything that's a go-to that you could share with our listeners that you think they would enjoy? Oh, I don't know that I have one of those. It's like I love the uh, Discovery. Discovery, the channel, and then uh, it used to be Velocity, yeah. and now it's... Now it's Motor Trend. Thank you. Thank you. Th- yeah. <laughs> yep. Motor Trend. So I love the Motor Trend channel. Just what rubs me the wrong way is that they've got these new shows like Fast with Finnegan, which I I love the new shows, but they're trying to force me to, if you want to see the new shows, spend $2 a month or $1, buy the application. I don't want to buy the app. I've already paid for my cable subscription. Why are you trying to do this? You cheap bastards, you money grubbing whore. It It just rubs me the wrong way. You're paying for cable. Motor Trend is on cable. You have a new show that you're producing for the television. Leave it show on it television. Advertisers yeah. are paying. I mean, show it yeah. to But you want, they need to make the more money. So that just, it rubs me the wrong way. But I do love those shows. Like Iron Resurrection is good fun with Shag and Joe. Uh, Fast with Finn again with Cotton, Newberg and, and Finn. They're, I mean, they're good fun shows. And Roadkill, it's genius. I mean, Freiburger came up with the idea to you build cars. And if they break, then you win. Yeah. Genius. I, I mean, know. Genius. Yeah. yeah, he's cool. For you listeners out there that didn't listen to my talk with him, go back and Freiberger is on a Cars yeah website, had a fun talk with him about how that all came about and where that show came from. Very cool. Now, now how about a book? Are you a book reader? And is there a book you might want to share? I'm not a book reader at all. Uh, no. Magazines, okay. Hot Rod Magazine, Super Chevy, Car Crap. Uh, and I save them up for my nephew uh, and give this to my nephew. The, uh, my friend Jessica York gave me this book years ago, and they just made it into a movie that I saw. I think it was on the way to Colorado for Christmas. The Art of Racing in the Rain. I, it was the first two pages in the book. I'm on the plane reading it, and I start sobbing. And the person next to me is like, hey, dude, are you okay? It's like, I'm okay, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a book reader at all, but the, the movie is good. Don't get me wrong, but the book is just. Yeah, it, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something, Jeff. Um, Gar Stein, the author of that book, has been on my oh. show. He lives up here in the Pacific Northwest. I oh, met okay. him. He drives a very cool Alpha GTV, by the way. It's kind of a perp, deep eggplant, purple green, a purple color. That book is the most recommended book here on Cars, yeah. All my guests recommend a book. Uh, the movie, of course, was great, but nothing compared to the book. And I'll tell you a funny story. The audiobook is really good. And I was out working in my side, side yard listening to the audiobook. I'd already read the book once. I knew what was coming, right? And I was getting tears, and I'm kind of in my neighbor walks. She goes, Mark, are you all right? Something wrong? <laughs> right. And I'm like, Enzo. <laughs> you know? And she's like, what? And I go, I'm listening to a book. And she's like, Okay. And then she turns around and she goes, a book about cars? And I go, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. yeah. She just went, whatever. They know me. I'm crazy here. That's for sure. It's I'll make fan- sure. I put- <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And, to, and then there's a, when Brock Yates passed away a few years ago, there was a post on Instagram with him. And I forget the other driver. I'm, I'm an idiot. Standing next to the, uh, the blue Ferrari 365 GTV4 Daytona that they took on the first Cannonball, and on the front fender is this was this is this name? I'm like, who the heck is this guy? So I looked up the guy. It's Kirk F. White is the person's name, and then through research and whatever, Kirk F. White has this blog. Don't wash mine. Whenever and he just I think he's being published now, but look up don't wash mine. It it kept me. I, I read it is fascinating this guy ha- and i he's friends with everybody knows everyone and was part of it back in the day when you could get these 250 gtos for a song and i mean drove them has driven everything and just the 
It's very cool. Uh, don't yeah. wash mine, Kirk F. White. Absolutely. I had Brock Gate Jr. as a guest here on Cars, yeah. Fascinating oh. listening to him talk about his dad and about all oh. the things that they're doing. And, of course, the Cannonball, the, the record was just reset by two guests I had on my show a few months ago. And they blew Never the old it. record. Yeah, they blew yeah. the old record away by like an hour and a half or two hours. I mean, I guess now with the roads empty might be the time to go try to break the new Cannonball record. Cause well, this is before the shutdown. And they do oh, I know. the GPS, oh, I know. the scanners, the radar. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. No, they, they had, they had yeah. blockers in different states. I mean, that was a that was an effort. It's an endeavor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, we don't condone speed, high speed here on car yeah, but you have to take your hat off to those guys. For oh, sure. 100%. That would, I mean, yeah. that would stress me out because I, I couldn't I do loved, it. I couldn't love do it. driving fast, but oh man, it would stress me out. No, not for uh, 24, 30 hours. I don't That's think right. I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> All right, Jeff, we're up to the checkered flag. And this last question is a fun thought, but I'm going to see where we're going to go with this. I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet, park it in your garage. But there are a couple rules to this game since I'm writing the check. One is you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. You have to keep it and drive it, which is easy for you. But here's the kicker. It's the only one you can have. That means you got to get rid of your 55. Now, if you can't do that, you keep the 55. That's your dream car. And I don't have to buy anything. So is this my daily driver then? No, no, no. This is a fun car. This is a collector car. You can keep your, if your 55 is a daily driver, you just bing, 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 you won. You know, the win. You're the winner. So the what 55 I, is my daily, but if you're giving me the option for it's a, a Ferrari yeah. 330 uh, P34, whatever that's what? that's my pipe dream car. Oh, and it's okay. like and I was just telling the guys across the alley from me, ER Performance, they work on five liter Mustangs. Fox Body Mustangs is their thing. So they're all Ford guys, and I and some all, all, they've all seen the new Ford versus Ferrari movie, and they they were asking me a couple of weeks ago what's my favorite car. And it's like you know the 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 car that lost. To the Ford GT40? Yeah, that's my favorite car. It may have lost, but it's the most beautiful car in the world. In my opinion, the most beautiful car, it's sex on wheels. It is just, I know, uh, was it Bob Glickenhaus has got one of them? And it's oh, like, yeah. they are, oh, yeah. they are just so sexy. And, um, yeah. my, one of my goals is to get out to the, the Simone Museum. Oh, in, Fred's, uh, Fred's Museum. Yeah. 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 He's got one and they start that one up and he's got one of the Daytona Coupe Cobras. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I've never seen a 330. P34 alive. I've never seen it living. And I, oh, that's one of my well, goals. I, I need to see it live. Yeah, you do. Um, I've had both those gentlemen as guests on the show. And uh, <laughs> I've been lucky enough to see one of those cars uh, actually at speed on the track of Laguna Seca going around the oh. track. And I got to see one in Florida at the Cavalino event and they took it out on the track. But uh, that's one of the most sexy cars on the planet. Definitely. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. yeah, it's cool. So I'd be happy to buy you one of those and, uh, Drive it down there to Southern California, park it in your garage. Jeff, you've taken me on a on an awesome ride today. I knew this would be fun. I want to thank you for spending time with us. Before I let you go, though, is there one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance, especially during these very challenging times we're facing right now, that you might offer our listeners before you drive off on the coast highway in that beautiful 330? I was going to, before we get, let me turn this around. You said Laguna Seca. Yeah. Uh, I was going up to the good guys a few years ago. And I just wanted a picture of the 55 with a sign of Laguna Seca. Oh, and I, nice. Yeah, I drove he's, around. Uh, yeah. Laguna Seca was closed. So I went to the other pla- the other entrance. Yep. And there was th- one car passed me, another car passed me. And so I followed them up the hill. And long story short, I met the head of operations who loved my car. It's like, where can I get a picture? How about the corkscrew? I'm like, what do you mean? Do you know what the corkscrew is? I'm like, this is Laguna Seca. I know what the corkscrew is. So <laughs> now, like, now when did you, when did you, now what is, what Jeff's showing me for you guys listening? He has a beautiful shot uh, at, of his car. It's 55 at Laguna Seca with the corkscrew up in the, the background. Now, when did you go do this? When did this happen? Two or three years ago. So that's, if you can see him, that right there, that's Rick. That's the guy who got me in there. But that's that's the tire. The front straight is way back there. You yeah. go through the loop. Yeah, that's yeah. The, yeah that's, that's, going, that's turn three to turn four right there. Yep. Exactly. And then the, yep. the corkscrew is right the there. Corkscrew. And, yeah. Yeah. So it was, okay. uh, I, I right place, right time. He liked my car and I was nice and respectful to him. And uh, so he let me in. And you know, uh, that's all yeah. that's all it takes. Yeah. You just be nice to people and you never know where you can get. Um, awesome track. I've raced there. I did a driving school there, a three day open wheel driving school there. It's a wonderful track. But but back to this par- pearls of wisdom in these trying times. What would Jeff say to our listeners to help them move through what we're dealing with these days? Uh, I think what I would say is uh, is keep on keeping on. 
keep on being persistent and when interacting with people, use please and thank you. They are the lubricants of social intercourse. So many people today are mean and nasty. And it's like, and I think this, and I point over there, I'm sorry. That this social media has just made, I, I had to, people just, people will post something. And, uh, you know, mama always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Right. And it's like, if you're talking around the water cooler and you say something, you, you may get through, you may get a punch in the mouth. But yeah. there's social media, or there's fired. no threat. Yeah, or <laughs> yeah. fired. There's no threat of that nowadays. So people have diary of the mouth and they just spout off with, with nonsense and they're mean and nasty. And I'm, I'm just sick and tired and over people being mean and nasty. Just be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Yeah. And uh, I'm just looking for this to, to get over with so we can get out there and, uh, and go drive them. And I'm hoping that all of the, the non-essentials will still be at home. And so the, the roads will be clear and we can there go out there go. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and get some miles under our belts. Just be nice. Great words of wisdom. How can people follow along with you? I know you have a website. Yeah, I'm a, my personal website is jeffthisted.com. Just my name for my hosting and voiceover and that kind of stuff. If you want to, you can find me there. My, uh, I'm Jeff Thisted also on Instagram and Facebook, but my, my, my car, my 55 right there. If you want to check out our car adventures, it's idrive55.com. It's that easy. I use that hashtag. Um, there's a link to that on my Instagram page, but yeah, and I'm on YouTube as well. I know, and yeah, I think you just followed me. So thank you. Yeah. I'm, I don't have any subscribers. Um, but <laughs> you do now. <laughs> I do now. Yeah. So thank you. Do now. Like, on my, on my YouTube channel, I've got, uh, I took, it's like I drive my car. So uh, it, ha- it used to have a little 350 with a 700 R4 and it's taken me everywhere from the top of Pikes Peak, 14,115 to the bottom of Badwater, 282 feet below zero from the Bonneville Salt Flats to turn number four, the Texas Motor Speedway to the Corkscrew at Laguna Seca. We've been there. So uh, I just well, put an LS in it and the LS is uh, now I'm just waiting for, for this to get over with so we can get to our events and uh, yeah. it'll be at all the good guys shows. I'm looking, I'm ready to rock. This will be behind us, I'm confident for sure. I'll make sure I put links to everything so you can follow Jeff on his Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to carsyeah.com, type in Jeff Thisted, T H I S T E D, like Jeff Twisted. Thisted is who I be. But Thisted is who That's he it. be. Yeah. Twisted abs- Thisted. That's right. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Jeff, thanks for uh, making today really fun for all of us, for sharing your life and your passion, your inspiration. Until you and I talk again, my friend, and then we'll see you at a show. I'll see you down the road. Thanks so much, Mark. It's been an honor. You're welcome. Hey, Cars Yeah listeners. This is Mark Green. If you love the Cars Yeah podcast, I have something new for you. I've teamed up with Keith Martin, a collector car market expert and the editor of Sports Car Market Magazine to create the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast. Buy, Sell, Hold is the essence of collecting. Together, we take you on an educational ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so you know when to buy, sell, hold. We talk with seasoned experts who buy, sell, and hold investment vehicles, and they'll share their insider secrets on how they make their buying decisions when it comes to making these important investments. You'll find the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast on the Cars yeah! website, on the Sports Car Market website, and if you're a podcast app subscriber to Cars yeah! Buy, Sell, Hold will come right to your mobile device, just like the Cars yeah! podcast, automatically. Join Keith Martin and me on a great new venture on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!